Wednesday, December 10th, uh, 2014 Zoning Board of Appeals uh, meeting. I'd like to call the uh, meeting to order. Uh, first item on the agenda is um, the approval of our last meeting of uh, October 28th, 2014. Do we have any uh, edits or comments around the minutes? Okay. Um, hearing none, I will, uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the uh, minutes of the October 28, 2014 uh, Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Second. Okay. Michael second. Uh, all in favor? 4-0. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there any old business? I don't see any on the agenda, so I guess we'll move right along to uh, new business, um, which is to hear the request of Jean G. Rand and Maria uh -oh, uh, Cervantes Rand. Uh, to construct an accessory dwelling unit above the existing garage at 1152 Shore Road, Map U10, Lot 53. Um, I believe Mr. Danielson is representing the appellant, uh, uh, applicants. Bob, would you like to? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if I can introduce the project to you. Uh, my client, uh, Gene Rand, is a widow who's in her 80s and is wheelchair bound. Uh, she just purchased the property in October at 1152 Shore Road and she uh, would like to uh, have some live-in help to help her with her daily activities and you'll notice the uh, layout of the property has a significant first floor master bedroom etc so she's able to uh, function in that property but um, she certainly would be uh, greatly relieved if she were to be able to have some live-in help. And we think we've designed a um, accessory dwelling unit which meets the requirements of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Ordinance. Uh, the the uh, lot lies in three different districts. It lies in the RA district. It's also in the Shoreland Protection District and it's in the RP3 district. The RA district has certain requirements for an accessory dwelling unit and this is permitted as a conditional use. Being in the Shoreland Zoning District, there's also requirements for accessory dwelling units and in fact it's a non-conforming structure in the uh, Shoreland District because it, part of the existing building lies within the 75 foot setback as revised most recently by the zoning ordinance that was amended on September, I think it was September 11th, Ben. Um, so we looked at the requirements. We submitted to you some calculations uh, as well as a survey, survey of the existing conditions and some plans showing the proposed improvements. And uh, probably the best thing to do is if I go through the requirements, but if you refer to the calculations that you have and the plans, um, you'll see where we I think we comply with all the requirements uh, of the zoning ordinance. Uh, if I could just kind of walk you through what I've got for requirements, um, and obviously uh, I can uh, take questions and entertain any suggestions. But in general, a conditional use perm uh, permit for an accessory dwelling unit is a conditional use permit. The requirements for a conditional use permit are set forth in section 19.5.5 uh, and there's basically six of them but the ones that I focused on or the ones that are applicable are that the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing or foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. This is basically a one, uh, uh, one bedroom apartment that's going to be added to an existing single family house on Shore Road. So we think that any traffic uh, would be negligible. Uh, the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal emissions to the air or other aspects of its design or operation. In the package that I submitted, you'll see that we are um, revising or recreating the septic system on site. It has private sewage. Uh, and there is a plan from Al Frick and Associates which outlines that this uh, new septic system capacity 
has more than enough capacity for one additional bedroom. It's an existing five-bedroom house now. There'd be one additional bedroom added. I think the additional sewage is calculated at 120 gallons uh, per day, and the septic system is, is going to be designed to uh, definitely accommodate that. So there should be no issues there. Um, the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. I spoke with the realtor that handled the sale for us, Vicki Kennedy at uh, Remax Oceanside, and she looked at the plans that we had, that the same plans that we submitted to you, and she said that given the residential character of this particular design and the fact that it does not uh, have a separate front entrance, she says that she does not feel as a realtor that there would be any adverse impact on any abutting properties, and she said she'd be willing to submit um, either an affidavit or, a, or allow, a, basically I asked her if I could put into the record that she, uh, that I spoke to her and she uh, gave me her opinion of value on that. Um, the proposed layout, I'm sorry, the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. Comprehensive plan encourages residential use along Shore Road in this, in this district, and we're certainly consistent with that, um, and my client is putting significant other dollars into, into improving the property in general, uh, so we feel that uh, this application certainly enhances that piece of property along Shore Road. Uh, and finally, the design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design, appearance, or architecture. Uh, again, I when I reviewed this with Vicki Kennedy, uh, she thought the design was very attractive. It was a shingle-style house, and she thought that that would be very uh, typical of other houses along Shore Road, uh, and certainly fitting in with architectural uh, details, etc. So having reviewed the requirements of a conditional use permit, I then turned to the requirements specifically for an ADU permit. Uh, which I don't, didn't write down the section, but it's the specific uh, section for granting of an ADU permit. And here's where I look to the calculations that I provided on a separate sheet for you. Uh, any ADU permit requires a minimum lot size of 12,000 square feet. We have 86,000 square feet. Compliance with the sewer ordinance. I mentioned the uh, proposal by Al Frick and Associates. Uh, the existing floor area, excluding the garage, must be a minimum of 1,500 square feet. We have 5,005 existing square feet. The accessory dwelling unit cannot occupy more than 25% of the resulting floor area. Um, our proposal says it's going to occupy 11.5. The floor area of the ADU must be, be between 300 and 600 square feet. Ours is 575. Uh, there must be an interior connection door. If you look to the plans, the actual um, <coughs> blueprints, you'll see that there is a uh, door coming through the garage. The entrance to the accessory dwelling unit is on the front of the building, but it's not on the facade of the building. The front of the building faces like this. You'll see the two garage doors. On the side of one of the garage doors is a separate door. So there's no further um, indication that there is a separate dwelling unit, but on the side of the front of the, of the garage, there is a, uh, an access, and there's also an interior access door. Um, the addition to the floor area cannot exceed 15%. Ours is 11.3%. We need to provide one parking space on site. There is clearly significant uh, area to provide a parking space, and we've shown that on the plans as well. Um, and the ex uh, exterior alteration shall preserve the single family appearance, and this again is where that um, front door, uh, the, sorry, the door that accesses the ADU is not on the facade of the building. Uh, and the uh, uh, property can have no home occupation or business. Uh, my client does not anticipate or not uh, contemplating any type of business use. Um, she likes the property. Uh, it's a very attractive waterfront property, and she wanted to use it for her personal residence. Um, the final requirement was that the uh, unit and the single-family dwelling be in the same ownership. I provided the code enforcement officer with a copy of the deed to the property, and 
the property will remain in, in one ownership. Um, my client's property is in a trust uh, basically for estate planning purposes and she and her daughter are the trustees. The requirements in the shoreland zone. The um, shoreland zone provides that a conditional use permit is allowed if it is allowed in the underlying district as a conditional use. And obviously the RA allows uh, an ADU as a conditional use, so the shoreland zone allows the same use provided that since this is a non-conforming structure within the uh, shoreland district, section 19.4 or 19-4-4B provides for enlargement of non-conforming buildings under the following requirements. If the structure does not meet the required setback from the high water line, which ours does not, it cannot be expanded in floor area or floor volume by more than 30%. Our area is 22.7% and our volume is 21.7%. So we feel that we've met all the requirements in all three of the districts uh, that the property lies and um, feel that we've uh, complied with the ordinance as far as the requirements for granting a accessory dwelling unit in an RA district. Thank you. Uh, questions for Mr. Daniels? Okay, I'll ask some questions. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, have, uh, were any of the abutters, I'm just kind of looking at the, at the uh, kind of diagram, I, guess I see a, a couple of homes that are, a couple that are perhaps behind um, your, your client's residence, have they been approached at all or did we? We, being new in the neighborhood, we did not approach any of the abutters, but I checked with Ben and I believe both direct abutters contacted the town offices and he may be able to answer that. Okay. I was contacted by two abutters, uh, the one from the north and, the, and I believe the one from the south. Mm -hmm. uh, both asked me questions about the application. I emailed one of them the application and they, they both seemed satisfied. They didn't have any negative comments regarding the application. Okay. And is the, I mean, I see it's kind of a, it's a shingle design. Is that what it is currently? Is yeah. It same? It's, but it's, it's a little dated right now. Yeah. Um, curiously, it was um, Judge McCusick's house, and uh -huh. he literally just passed away this week. Um, but his family had owned that for years, many years. Mm -hmm. Okay. And on the, shore, on the setback for Shoreland Overlay, is there a calc? I, I see a couple of diagrams. I'm just wondering if the if the setback is um, calculated anywhere on on here. I'm pad. sorry. The the setback from the uh, the uh, our new definition. Oh, wait, yeah. The, on the survey, on the survey, we've identified the the high water mark as it relates in the 75 foot setback. So you can see that most of the existing structure and all of the garage lies within the 75 foot setback now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of lines on the plan, but you should be able to. What's the, what's the latest date on that survey, Ben? Is, it, is that different than the one we have in front of us? I, I asked for a full size stamped copy of the survey okay. in, in addition to the 11 by 17. Uh, this is dated, this was the signature date on this is 12 4 14. The plan date is August 6th, 2008. Is there a revision? Yeah, it was revised to take oh, into I account the new change in the ordinance, right. I, but I, I don't know if he marked it as revised. I, I, had, I had him sign it so and stamp it just last week. Sure, no, that, that, I guess that's, that's what I'm getting at. I think yeah. we, we probably have one that's referencing the old, uh, 
the highest astronomical tide. I do have a copy of the 2008 plan in my uh, file, which would show a different line that I think the uh, difference between the high water line was seven feet to ten feet. Is that what it was on the on the elevations? I think that the old was seven feet, the new was ten feet. Yeah, that's roughly. Okay, and there's, there's I guess a question for you. There's no. There's no issue as far as building an ADU within the 75-foot setback <clears throat> if the underlying structure is essentially grandfathered? Or That's correct. The zoning ordinance doesn't speak about what, what type of use occurs in, in the expansion. It just states that the expansion can't be more than 30% and mm -hmm. can't get closer to the water. Question, Mr. Chair. Is is the footprint changing at all, or just essentially it's just, going up? It's just up going up. Yeah, it's just going up. And and there is, on the survey, shows the existing footprint. Yeah. Um, and the plans show the schematic. Sure. Nothing. It's just going straight up. That's what I. Yeah. That's what I. That's what it appeared. Now, is that is the new septic system? I saw a couple things in the application. One of which was a. It seemed like an inspection of the existing system, and I think they concluded it's in pretty good shape and it's in working order. And then a, a design for a new system, obviously, because there's, as you mentioned, the additional flows associated with the accessory. That's, that's correct. Unit. Is the, the enlarged system is going to be constructed, or is that sort of being held in reserve in the event that the existing one fails? or? What? No, it's, it's my understanding the large system is going to be constructed as part of the construction of the unit. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Danielson? You're awful quiet, man. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Danielson. Uh, I do not see anybody out in the... Uh, audience for public opinion, so I guess we'll, for public comment, we'll close the uh, public comment section of the, of the program. Um, I guess uh, take it up for the board. Any, uh, any thoughts concerning the application or? And I think you mentioned that you had some public comment, but nothing adverse to the, the application. That's correct. I thought the application was really thorough, and I appreciate the fact that Mr. Danielson took us through the, the standards and exactly how it met, so I, I have no concerns. I, I would echo that. Um, looks like a complete application. Looks like all the standards have been met, so it seems to me it's, it's uh, heat up for approval. Um, and I would, I would agree, I think, that uh, the applicant has gone through the standards that, that apply here that seems to be in compliance with all the various ordinances. Um, so I'd be supportive of the application as well. I concur. Uh, excessive detail. It's like an admonition or something that is in too much detail. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, why don't we uh, I have a motion uh, concerning the, uh, the application. I'll uh, <clears throat> move to approve the request for a conditional use permit to create an accessory dwelling unit above the garage in an existing single family dwelling. Um, Subject property being at 1152 Shore Road. Okay. I have a second. I'll second it. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Okay. Well, that's 4 0 unanimous. Uh, why don't we go through the finding of facts as well? Um, 
to approve those. Uh, this is a request for a conditional use permit to create an accessory dwelling unit above the garage of an existing single family dwelling per section 19-7-5 of the zoning ordinance. The subject property is 1152 Shore Road, map U10, lot 53. Gina and Maria Rand are the owners of record. Uh, additional finding of facts. The proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when, add, when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. The proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or other aspects of its design or operation. The proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. The proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. The design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to the neighborhood, or its neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design, appearance, or architecture. And six, the applicant has demonstrated compliance with the requirements in section seven, I'm sorry, 19-7-5B of the zoning ordinances. Uh, can I have a vote for those findings of facts? All in favor? Uh, oh. Sorry, Chair, I have a no. um, point of interest. The name of the owner should be changed or modified so that you mentioned the two individuals that they hold as trustees yeah. and that either including that phrase or including the name of the trust would be appropriate. Okay, so why don't we, get, why don't we just modify it to add the, the, to the applicant, you know, what's on the application? That's fine. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, Jean Rand and Maria Cervantes Rand as co-trustees of the Jean G. Rand Revocable Trust. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for the pickup. Okay, any other tweaks to the finding of facts? Okay, uh, so with that change of, of changing the name of the owners of record, uh, can I have show of hands for approving the finding of facts? All in favor? Opposed? That is four yeses and no noes. Okay. Um, great. Application is approved. Thank you, Mr. Danielson. Uh, where is the agenda? I've lost it. Okay. Any uh, communications? Okay. Yes. Uh, th this is John Thibodeau's last meeting, and yes. I'd like to thank him for his service to the zoning board. He's been a very valuable member, and we'll miss you. Thank, thank you, Ben. Um, I'll just say it's it's actually this. I, I was looking the other the other day that I've actually been on the board for six years, which does not seem possible. Um, and I've certainly learned a lot through this process and uh, seen a lot of um, citizens come and go. And um, and I really like the composition of this um, of this board and and some of the new members we've gotten on. And I think Ben. It's been a terrific addition to uh, to the town's uh, offices, and uh, I think we're in a much better place with you uh, being here. So I wish you the best of luck, and I wish all of you the best of luck, and thank you very much. You. So the meeting is a joke. Can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> Make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. Sure. Nice. Okay. <laughs> uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>